Howard Johnson Restaurants was a chain of restaurants that opened in 1929 and closed in 2022. Thank you for your suggestion. On the road around the corner, here's the place to go. The orange roof of Howard Johnson's, join the folks who know. Good food, good fun, kids count too. 28 flavors just for you at Howard Johnson's. Next up, Howard Johnson's. Next up, In 1929, Howard Deering Johnson opened his first restaurant in Quincy Square's Granite Trust Building in Quincy, Massachusetts. Mr. Johnson started out as a salesman for his father, a Boston cigar jobber. As smokers increasingly turned to cigarettes, however, the business fell into debt, and after his father died, Johnson closed it. Looking for a better enterprise, he bought a small pharmacy selling candy, newspapers, and patent medicines in Walston, a Boston suburb, in 1925. For $500 he borrowed, picking up also its debts of at least $28,000. Johnson revived the store's soda fountain and seeking a quality product that would bear his name, introduced chocolate ice cream with a secret formula a butterfat content almost twice the standard. It proved a hit, so he added other flavors and opened a beachfront stand where he sold $60,000 worth of ice cream cones in a single summer. By 1928, his gross sales of ice cream had risen to $240,000. The ice cream became a huge hit. This was followed by grilled hot dogs and fried clams at the store bringing in droves of customers. When Johnson opened his first restaurant in neighboring Quincy in 1929, he made fried clams and broiled swordfish the specialties and also included homemade baked beans, brown bread, and pastries. The restaurant happened to be at the right place at the right time. A local theater held a five-hour play that was presented in two parts with a dinner break. The first Howard Johnson restaurant was near the theater and hundreds of influential Bostonians flocked to the restaurant. Through word of mouth, more Americans became familiar with the Howard Johnson Company. The restaurant was a success, but he was frustrated in his desire to expand by lack of capital before 1935 due to the Great Depression, when he persuaded an acquaintance to open a restaurant in Orleans on Cape Cod and sell his ice cream under a franchise. This would become one of America's first franchising agreements. By the following summer in 1936, there were four Howard Johnson franchise restaurants called Howard Johnson's and 13 small Johnson-owned roadside stands being converted into restaurants. By the end of the year, 39 more franchise restaurants had been opened. Howard Johnson's phenomenal growth was based on the application of two relatively new and untried concepts. Its founder, unable to obtain loans from bankers, was a pioneer in the franchising field. Licensees, rather than the chain, bore the stored-up costs, which included an initiation fee paid to the company, which then made more money by selling food and other supplies to the licensees. And Howard Johnson foresaw that the growing popularity of the automobile would send millions of hungry Americans out on the road. By the end of 1939, there were 107 Howard Johnsons along the eastern seaboard and as far south as Florida, mostly along highways. Generally situated along major highways and drafted by Johnson's staff of 27 architects, Howard Johnson's were easily distinguished by the porcelain roof tiles of a special orange color, scientifically determined as the best shade for attracting a motorist's attention. A New England-style blue cupola was mounted on the roof. 
Site engineers determine the locations and supervisors hired and trained cooks, waitresses, and counter clerks. Quality control from headquarters assured that the 28 flavors of ice cream, fried clams from the company's own clam bed, and pies baked on the premises according to company recipes and other items would meet the standards of the Howard D. Johnson Company. With America's entry into World War II, Gasoline rationing took such a toll on the Howard Johnson's chain that the number of restaurants fell in little more than a year from about 200, 75 of them company operated, to about 75. By the summer of 1944, only 12 remained in business. The company took part of the slack by turning some of the restaurants into jam factories and by operating cafeterias for workers and war plants. By the summer of 1947, construction was underway on the first of 200 new branches to stretch across the southeast and midwest. Still owned exclusively by its owner, the Howard D. Johnson Company was providing its restaurants with some 700 items, including the saltwater taffy always found on the counters. By 1954, there were about 400 Howard Johnson restaurants in 32 states of which about 10% were highly profitable company-owned units on turnpike locations. That year, Howard Johnson entered the motel business. When Howard Johnson Company went public in 1961, it consisted of 605 Howard Johnson restaurants, 10 Red Coach Grilled Company-owned restaurants, and 88 Howard Johnson Motor Lodges, all of them franchised in 33 states and the Bahamas. There were also 17 manufacturing and processing plants in 11 states. The number of motels reached 130 in 1964, each with a Howard Johnson restaurant on the site or adjacent to it. Popular Howard Johnson staples were now being frozen and distributed through supermarkets in the Northeast. In the mid-1960s, Howard Johnson became a coast-to-coast -coast chain for the first time by opening California outlets. Marked by occasional gasoline shortages and frequent gas price hikes, the 1970s were a difficult decade for companies catering to motor traffic, but especially for Howard Johnson, which depended on highway operations for 85% of its business. It reacted to the challenge by instituting around-the-clock service in more than 80% of the company-owned restaurants, installed cocktail lounges in place of soda fountains in about 100 of these locations, increasing seating capacity, and stepped up the special menu promotions. New hojos would be concentrated in population centers rather than along highways. By the end of 1975, the Hojo Empire had grown to 929 Howard Johnson restaurants, with 649 being company operated, 32 Red Coach Grill restaurants, 63 Ground Round restaurants, and 536 motor lodges in 42 states. Nevertheless, in the competitive struggle for the traveler's dollar, Howard Johnson was falling behind fast food franchisers like McDonald's and Burger King and growing lodging chains like Holiday Inns, Ramada Inns, and Marriott. The classic orange roof Howard Johnson's especially were perceived as past their prime. Customers complained of the agonizing slow service and overpriced, bland, predominantly frozen food that gave rise to the gag, Howard Johnson's ice creams come in 28 flavors, and it's food in one. Criticized for choosing to stand pat and hoard company cash, this ultimately led to the company being acquired by Imperial Group Limited of Great Britain, a tobacco, food, beer, and packaging conglomerate. For its money, Imperial received 1,040 restaurants and 520 motor lodges for $630 million. In September of 1985, however, Imperial threw in the towel, selling the Howard Johnson Company to Marriott Corporation $314 million. Marriott kept the 418 company-owned restaurants, but immediately sold the franchise system and the company-owned lodging units to Prime Motor Inns, Inc., 
for $97 million. Prime also assumed Howard Johnson's $138 million in debt. For its money, Prime received the Howard Johnson trade name and trademark, 125 hotels and motor lodges operated by Howard Johnson, 375 franchised lodges, and 199 franchised restaurants. Neither did Marriott have an interest in prolonging the life of a restaurant chain whose name was already held by a lodging operation in competition with its own. The corporation intended to convert these units to Big Boy and Saga restaurants, which would be in turn be sold. By the end of 1987, only 90 Marriott-owned Howard Johnson restaurants remained, and by mid-1991, only 50. Similarly, Prime wanted to wash its hands of the independently owned units once the franchise agreements expired. Because Marriott eliminated all of the company-owned restaurants, the owners of the franchise restaurants feared elimination and banded together in 1986 and created the Franchise Associates Incorporated. In 1986, Marriott gave FAI the right to operate and maintain Howard Johnson restaurants. While the Howard Johnson's restaurant chain was preserved, FAI did not have enough money to expand to new locations or revamp the brand. FAI never opened a new restaurant or expanded the chain. Attempts were made to revamp the 25% of the menu and create new signage, but these efforts proved insufficient as the long neglected chain continued to lose ground to mass market fast food operations. By 1995, it was clear that the number of restaurants were in decline, with just 84 restaurants left. By the turn of the new century, Howard Johnson restaurants were but a memory. By 2005, there were fewer than eight surviving restaurants. A combination of no vision, no reinvestment of capital, aging restaurants, a stale menu, lack of marketing or new ideas, and competition from other chains had taken their toll. Restaurants were closing their doors. FAI ceased operations in 2005. By 2012, there were only three locations remaining. On March 31, 2015, the Lake Placid, New York, Howard Johnson's closed, leaving only two locations remaining. Then in September of 2016, the Bangor restaurant, the last continuously operating restaurant from the original chain, closed the last remaining location out of the original 1,000 plus. The last surviving Howard Johnson's restaurant is no more. It was in Lake George. In the 60s and 70s, Howard Johnson was considered America's largest restaurant chain. Jonathan Hunter took a trip up to Lake George today. Jonathan, good evening. Yes, good evening, Sabrina. And today I spoke to a couple people locally and just about everyone I spoke to says they enjoyed coming to Howard Johnson's and they say they had good memories coming and eating inside. And Howard Johnson's, also known as Hojo's, was known for having a family-like atmosphere and affordable prices. These vintage commercials from the 1960s shows the restaurant in their prime. Their mac and cheese, hot dogs, and ice cream cones were a big hit with family. And the property is up for sale and even though Howard Johnson's restaurant did close the hotel chain is still up and running in March of 2022 after a number of controversies the Lake George restaurant permanently closed the last restaurant establishment to use the Howard Johnson's name so what do you remember about this place leave a comment or a suggestion for a future video below and if you haven't already Hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.